peace everybody got another guest coming on today making it the second interview i did today i actually was going to do four but tomorrow i'm going to have another special guest come on kid nice from the new york city breakers this is the first crew that put power moves on the map we're going to talk about it he's a 70s b-boy though too so he's been breaking since the early 70s so that should be dope that's going to be some history new york city breakers kid nice what's up jimmy what's up vix you gotta ask to join the live then we can do this palm trees is crazy in the back Yeah, Vix, you just gotta ask to um, join the live, and then when our cameras connect. It should be connecting right now. Yo, what up? Yeah, there we go, bro. What's going on? Oh, I'm chilling, man. I'm chilling. Okay. Just getting home from work. You know what I mean? I know exactly what you mean, Vic. I work every day, though, too, though, bro. So. Yeah. yeah. Just having some downtime, you know what I mean? Just That's chilling what's out. up, man. Yeah. Yeah, Vic. Just watch some, I reached watch some YouTube. <laughs> okay. Yeah, bro. I reached out to you because now that I thought about it, like, me and you've never really like sat down and had a conversation, but we've been crossing each other since the early 2000s. So I think the first time I crossed you was at the Mighty Four in San Francisco and all you guys had this, the shirts that said Zulu Kings in the back. I was like, yeah, I remember oh, that. the Zulu Kings though, bro. Yeah, I actually remember that. Yeah, I remember that. I remember seeing you there. And that was the mm -hmm. first time that I was, that I was aware of you. And uh, yeah. Yeah, I was with North Star. I was oh, with North Star that day. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I just totally remember that, bro. That. I I got a pretty good uh, memory though, um, Vix, because I remember all you guys had the Zulu Kings and like with the red sweaters with the old English writing on the back, you know. And I was thinking to myself, like, yo, that's crazy because I was with North Star, mm -hmm. you know, and we was all there, we was all there deep. But when we seen you guys come in, we was like, that was the first time I actually seen like Zulu Kings, but the first time I really got a glimpse of you guys is was um back on MySpace when um when I would see like Casper and everybody, you know, like Jose and all those guys was representing uh -huh. MZK though. And then that's when I, I heard about you and then I heard about Cream. I, I think I think we I think we rocked together. Didn't didn't we rock against we each did. other? Yeah, we exactly. Was, we got on the patchy line. Yeah, that's what I remember. See, I'm glad you have a good memory because my memory is terrible, bro. Okay. I have a really okay. bad memory. I, I forget a lot of things. And so you just brought that back to me right now. So that was cool. That's how we actually met because I knew you was on one side and I was on one side. And it was more mm -hmm. like, okay, you Zulu, I'm Zulu. But it was like we wasn't trying to diss each other. We were just trying to see, like, like where you at? Like from B-Boy to B-Boy, yeah, what's up? Yeah. And what year was that? Was that Mighty Four? Like, Mighty like two, Four I think maybe about like 2000, I want to say 2005, 2006. That sounds about right. Well, One that's of those really years cool. though, bro. Yeah. That's really cool. That was an amazing event. That yeah, was an awesome event. Bro. The Top Rock Battle, right? Exactly. I remember Bandit battling Taekwon. Yeah. And that, that was a great battle, man. I wish I could see that that battle. I know, bro. Like, was that you? Was that you guys' first time, like, on the West Coast? Uh that was my one and only time in the Bay. Okay. Only time I went was for that one jam. That was the only time I've been over there. What'd you think about it when you got there, coming from Ohio? It was like an in and out. It was like an in and out. I had been to LA several times. But, um, you know, the Bay was, it was really short. It was just like really, really short. And I really don't remember a whole lot about it. I just remember like hearing stories. I think, I think it was uh, the guys from Boston, like, um, was it El Nino and them? I think they got checked by some gangsters <laughs> over there. 
And I remember. Yeah, yeah bro. Cali don't I'm play, like, oh, bro. Nah. Like, they was walking to the gym. They had got checked. So I'm, I just remember, like, being on my guard, you know? You know what, Vic? I just want to, like, um, add something to that. A lot of people, like I was saying, they don't realize when you get to California, it's like, like the gang element's real, though, bro. Like, yeah. this, I remember one time there was an event, a Star Elements anniversary, and I remember Frankie Flag came outside. He said, everybody, he said, don't go down this street, though, bro, because there's a there's a crew, there's a group of dudes called the Playboys, and if you go down that street, like, wearing red, he said, don't even go that way, though, bro. But it was crazy that he had to come out and let the whole entire B-Boy community know, like, don't go down this street because we're in Inglewood. You know what I'm saying? In Inglewood, there's a lot of bloods, though. So if you're a B-Boy rocking all blue, there's no, they don't, they don't, they don't ask questions out here, bro. Because they, they wow. don't, they, only thing they can recognize is the blue. They don't care if you're a B-Boy. They just see the blue, though, and the blue's a no-no. Yeah. Yeah, let's see. That's a totally different scenario. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, I remember my first time coming to L.A. I think it was, I want to say it was for the uh, Free Soul Session 8 in the, at, on the okay. Queen Mary. And yeah. I remember, I think we stayed, like, we ended up staying, like, in Compton somewhere. Like, not, like, not knowing where we was at, you know? Inglewood, Compton area. And we took the train everywhere. And I, I had a rag, bro. I had a, I think it was a black rag. And it was sticking out my pocket in the back. Like, just, I didn't even know it was sticking out. I just had it, you know, because I had long hair or something like that. And I was just, you know, using it for my, for my hair. But I had it in my back pocket. And it was actually sticking out on the train. And somebody had tapped me on the shoulder and said, hey, you're not from around here, are you? And I said, no, I'm not. And it was like, yeah, you should, uh, you, you need to put that rag in your pocket. <laughs> somebody like, look, I actually said that to me on the train. Yeah, Vic, you know what? Even to this day, it's still like that, bro. You get what I'm saying? And mm -hmm. um, it, it was it was harder, like, really in the 80s. So I want to ask you, have you ever seen the movie Breaking 2? Uh, I've seen it. Like, I remember, was like, that's the one when they're breaking on the ceiling and all that, right? Yeah, exactly. That's yeah. breaking, too, though. Okay. <laughs> yeah. So you remember you remember the club, The um, it was called Radiotron, though, right? Vaguely. Vaguely remember. Okay. I vaguely well, remember. Anyways, I have to I'm, I'm, revisit it. Okay, so what I want to show you is, you see this building right there, bro? Mm-hmm. That's where Air yeah. Force crew came up, though, bro. That's where Little Caesar and everybody used to practice, though, bro. Oh, really? Yeah, basically, that's, that's where Air Force came up, though, bro. They were breaking at that theater probably as early, like, as 82. What's the name of that theater there? This is MacArthur Park. MacArthur. That's it was cool. actually in the movie. Yeah, this park, this park was actually in the movie Breaking 2, though, bro. Hmm. Yeah, so this park has a... Yeah, this park has a lot of history, especially when it comes for, like, like b-boy culture at that stage. Like, most of the battles for L.A., that was really going hard, though, bro, like, right there. So it's kind of like that theater is equivalent to the um the 1520 Cedric Avenue, like, um cedar, though, like, for the West Coast, mm -hmm. right here. Yeah, Oz, Rock, know, Oz Rock was here, too. Okay. Yeah, I know, th I know that there's a lot of history, tons of history in the Bay. You know, as far as the, yeah. the early hip, you know, West Coast hip hop, b boy, and all that, you know, so it's it's really interesting to learn about all that type of stuff and all the connects, make the dots, you know, connect the dots, you know, on the West Coast. That's super. That's super yeah. cool. That's really I, I think really cool. honestly though, Vic, for yourself too, because I know you're a true b boy though. I think it's important too to know the West Coast history just as much as the East Coast. Oh yeah. Oh yeah, because you know, bro. Like in the, you know, in the early nineties, I'm pretty. What year did you start breaking? Ninety seven. Ninety seven. So did you hear mm -hmm. about Cali in ninety seven? That was, uh, that was like, so like when I first started breaking, you know, they okay. they was I started here in Ohio, right, Columbus, and they were Ooh. Was a, what? they was a there was a hip hop shop. And my brother okay. was already he was DJing. I was twelve years old, so he was. DJing. DJ and he took me to this record store and it was like a hip hop shop and they had the style elements uh strategic monsters playing on the VC oh. on the VCR in the shop. And I seen it, I was like I was amazed. I bought the bootleg, you know, style elements tape. I bought the bootleg <laughs> uh 
um, what was it? The uh, free so one of the freestyle sessions, like I think it was freestyle session two, you know. And right. I, and I bought the uh, bootleg uh, Battle of the Year '96. Those are the those are like <laughs> the first three videos I ever copped, and I just watched it and tried to learn from that. So I was yeah. I was big inspired by the by the West Coast and and when I first started. Oh, that's dope, though, bro. Yeah. yeah. Cause like back in '97, yeah, Stylemans, bro, they were like the kings though. Them and Renegades oh, though, bro. Yeah. Oh yeah, bro. Oh, they was on top. Jazzy, of you ever heard of a dude named Jazzy J? Of course. Of course. Jazzy J. They battled the radio tron. They battled right. the radio tron. Stylemans. Yeah, Jazzy J was the king power at the time. Yeah, bro, he was like everybody looked up to Jazzy because he could do like a. A two-minute combo on you, bro. He'll do everything. And his mm -hmm. legs were straight, like gymnastics. They were really, his legs weren't bent. He had, like, like a perfect form. Mm -hmm. You know, it's funny because I just did an interview with Just Rock yesterday. And okay. uh, it's going to be posted. Um, it's going to be posted on uh, on YouTube soon. Yeah. But um, we actually talked a little bit about that, too. And uh, there was a guy when I, uh, I was, like, breaking for probably one or two years. And I think it was 99. He came from the West Coast, from Arizona, and uh, we would, had a small crew, like a real small crew. It was just me, my homie uh, Manny, and my homie uh, Alon. Okay. And then this guy came, and we we at the you know when I first started, we was just doing footwork and stuff like that. But we didn't, I didn't have no power moves besides like a windmill. Mm. And this guy came from the West Coast, and he just had all these. He had all the power moves. Okay. And we had never seen it live like that, like all the power move combos and everything. Oh. And uh, it, he was actually from uh, he was actually from the Arizona Floor Assassins. Yeah, bro, that's original Phoenix crew too. Yeah, was and he came Latino to Latino dude. Was it like a Latino dude? Moves. Was he Latino? No, no, no. He was. Uh, he's a. Uh, he's a Vietnamese oh, dude. Vietnamese. Okay. Yeah, but like all the rest of them, are, like his whole crew, you know, like most of them are like Latinos. Okay. He was like the one Vietnamese guy. <laughs> mm. I got you. Yeah, you're right. When I think about it, um, Arizona Floor Assassins and um, another crew be, be, um, that was like during that time was called, called Styles Crew. Eventually became Furious Styles Crew. Yeah, but they were called yep. Styles Crew first. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I know all about that. You know, like I said, this guy came in '99, and he became mm. part of my crew, and we was only four deep. And we basically, we basically ran Ohio, just us four. But he taught us all of our power moves. Okay. Yeah. So, and I met, I, you know, he brought uh, some of his guys, like uh, Calvin, who's like a 14 years old, short black dude. Okay. And nasty, bro. Nasty, the nastiest power. Um, Jojo, which he was the older brother from Jacob, which was the little kid in the free soul session that took all his clothes off. Oh, yeah, yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So his older brother, um, Jacob, he was the power move master, bro. He, he had he had one one handed air flares in the early two thousands. Damn, I believe it. Mm -hmm. He was that's crazy though. Was, Thanks for sharing like, that for me. I didn't even know about that. And he was like sixteen. Sixteen <laughs> at the time when he was doing it. It's yeah. crazy, bro. Yeah, a lot of people don't know. A lot of no, no don't know about JoJo. You know, but uh, you know, I met him. He brought they brought him out here and everything. Like I met all those right. dudes. You know, I was gonna share with you too, Vic. Back in the day, I had met these dudes. Um, they were in the crew. I think they were from Pittsburgh. They were called Jedi Monks. Jed Jedi my um, it was a the Jedi um Imperials, the Jedi Imperials the from Indiana. Yeah, yeah, Jedi Imperials. And then Exactly. Um, they sent me some footage, and I remember a guy sent me a, a VHS. And as soon as the beginning came on, it said "Ill Style Rockers from Ohio." Oh wow, wow, that's you know crazy. who that is. Those you know are who my Forrest Gump is. Forrest Gump. Yeah, those, those are my teachers. Yep, that's what, that's yeah, the first time teachers. I ever heard of. That's the first time I ever heard of Ohio. And then I remember I started getting in contact with a dude named Numbers. Okay. Remember numbers? He got into Dynasty later. Yeah, yeah I never met him, but yeah, yeah I know, who, I know who you're talking about. Yeah, so numbers was yeah, from he was, um, he was from Ohio. Is he? I didn't yep. know that. 
I didn't know that, but um, you know, I, I know that Dre Live and and Gump and them they exactly. they know they know num they talk about numbers. Yeah, yeah, numbers. Eventually, I think he just kind of got into the um, he got into the rock thing though too because he used to be in rock steady. Okay. Okay, that's interesting. Does it? I think he lives in Vegas now or something like that, or he had moved right. To Vegas. Yeah, he, he he was really down with the rock though. You know what I'm saying? Then I think yeah, um, yeah. I kind of I kind of. I noticed like over time like um people just kind of start fading maybe because they start they have different chapters in their life that they just go to mm -hmm. you know what i'm saying mm -hmm. because i remember he was super down with, with rock for a while though bro him and king up rock were doing shows mm -hmm. like crazy though bro and yeah um, yeah i remember that yeah i just wanted to ask you though too like maybe um uh, this name might ring a bell for you though um buzz from a touch of rock yeah yeah i know but but before you move on, I want to talk about Ill Style okay. Rockers, bro. Yeah, let's talk about that. Rockers, Ill Style Rockers are so pivotal when it comes to Ohio uh, history. And, you know, they they basically, um, Dre Live, Forrest Gump, they influenced all of us that came from Ohio and later became the Zulu Kings. You know, the mighty Zulu oh, Kings. Oh, I didn't know that. Yeah. Yeah, they're like our OGs. You know, okay. Um, me, Brooks, Taekwon, Square, all of us, we are all influenced by um, Dre Live and Forrest Gump from the Ill Star Rockers. Ooh. You know, and our style, like our funkiness, you know, when we came on the scene, we had a different style. And a lot of that comes from those guys. Mm, okay. So those are the roots. Those are our roots. So, um, and, and a lot of people don't know about them because they don't go out, you know, Dre Live, he, he, stays, he stays local. But uh, he is yeah. he he's a super gem, bro, a super gem. And as a matter of fact, they do a um, Ill Style Rockers anniversary every Christmas. And so this oh. year they're having the twenty. I think it's I want to say it's, I'm not sure what I want to say it's the twenty fifth. I think it is twenty fifth. Yeah, year it's anniversary. Older than twenty years. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. The Ill Style Rockers anniversary on the twenty third. It's going to be in Akron, Ohio. Dope, one of the dopest jams in the country, bro. It's a small, intimate club. They do it at the same club every year since the 90s. Dang. But it's just Dang. intimate, like Gump spinning the illest DJs, like the, fire, the most fire ciphers, you know, rock, all that, bro. So it's the 20, you, 23rd of December. Do you remember Shaolin Monk, too? Um, um, he was in yes. Ill Style Rockers. Yes, yeah, he was from New York. He was actually from, um, dang, it's right up to New York, though. Um, it, was it Rhode Island? Okay. Yeah, he's, he's from, the, either way, he's from the East Coast, oh. Connecticut. Okay, New England. He might have came down. Yeah, Connecticut. And moved to the Bronx, I think, for a little bit or something like that. Yep, but, uh, yep, because he got in rock steady. Mm hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, uh, I never met the guy, but um, I've heard uh, Dre live. Uh, and and Forrest Gump talk about him a lot. He was one of the pivotal um, members originally for the for the Ill Style Rockers. And in fact, um, I heard I just heard a story of um, Dre live tell about um, Shaolin Monk that um, he was actually offered um, the to uh, re how do you say uh, resurrect the the Zulu Kings before Ness did it. What? He was the, what? he was actually given the offer from Bambada to uh Shaolin Monk and Shaolin Monk turned it down. Yo. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Yo, that's why I love talking to you though, bro, because you dropping shoes <laughs> on me. I don't even know about. Yeah, bro. Yeah, that was I think that's, a, that's the dope thing I, um that's the dope thing about. I want to ask you, are you still repping MZK? Yeah, absolutely. Cuz I yeah, for sure. I mean, I just, I just, I just noticed when I would see you around, I noticed that you kind of toned down on the MZK um, shirts and stuff. So I was kind of thinking maybe he just kind of like more focused on the rock than MZK. Um, you know, I, I definitely focus on. I'm more focused on rock, you know, than breaking. That's for sure. Okay. But uh, MZK will always be, you know, my home team. You know what I'm saying? Mm. They, they'll always be a special place in my heart. You know what I'm saying? And I, and I'm I'm supporting them in any way possible. You know, they're just dope because they're even starting to have a, a younger generation come out and they're starting mm -hmm. to make noise. Um, the the a new wave of MCK and it's like, bro, it just fills my heart to see that. 
You know what I mean? And I and I support them or hundred hundred ten percent. Like anything they do. You know what I'm saying? I'm I'm more I'm more my role in the MZK is uh with the prospects. Okay. So so I'm like I do a lot of behind the scenes, you know, with the prospects, you know, training them up and different things like that. So mm-hmm. um that's kinda of, kind of my that's kinda of my role. I'm not in the front lines, you know, battling obviously. You know what I'm saying? Oh, got you. But um you know, I leave that to the you know to the younger guys. You know, I still I still get down. Obviously, you know, of course I get down. But as far as you know, entering the free throw session, you know, what I'm saying like as a b boy, like on the squad, like I'm not I'm not you know I'm not on the starting lineup. <laughs> so you know you're I mean? uh, right. So MZK, like the one when they, Jose would tell me the original thirteen. Who's the original thirteen? That, that's um. So that's Poe Ness. Um, came out, uh, me, me, Perry C, um, Jules, uh, okay. Smurf, Casper, um, mm-hmm. who else? I'm missing two. I'm missing two guys. Uh, Katsu, Katsu, okay. Katsu, and, uh, who's the one I'm missing? Mm-hmm. No, I'm missing a couple. Um, Busy Books, Busy Brooks, Brooks, Brooks is one, and then, um, Who's the other three? Um, wasn't there another white kid from Ohio too? Deads, Deads, but he wasn't. A, he's not original thirteen. Okay. Yeah, because he, he didn't battle with us uh, with the patches. We the original thirteen was the thirteen that brought you know the patches to to the jam, the uh, the first session that we won. So we mm. was rocking the patches. So he you know he he was definitely a part of the genesis though. He was definitely part. But um yeah, I'm missing um just a couple more. I just I you know, I just Cook said Taekwon. Of course, Taekwon's got to oh, be in there. Taekwon. I, I think I forgot Taekwon. <laughs> Taekwon, yeah. And um, I don't know. There's, there's probably... what up, Prevail? I don't remember. Yeah, that's tight though. Um, I just wanted to show this to you because I know a lot of um, you might have seen this before, but this is the original medallion that I was given. Mm. That's dope. Yeah. I got this from the Bronx River Projects when I got in Zulu in 94. Really? really? Yeah, bro. That's interesting, man. That's interesting. So how did you, yeah. how did you link up with um with the Zulu, like, so early? Um, You know what it was, though? Like, Vix, like, I remember seeing the Source magazine, and I seen Cool Herc, Africa Bambada, and Grandmaster Flash. So I was really intrigued by the history. And then when I opened up the magazine, mm-hmm. it said Universal Zulu Nation, Bronx River Projects with an address. So I wrote to them. I wrote <laughs> them a letter. You know wow. what I'm saying? It took, a, it, took a, it took them a year to get back to me, though, bro. And I was like, why did it take so long? And it was like, oh, we were just reviewing your application. And then, like, I remember oh. I wrote them a letter back, though, bro. And I, I think I just wrote, like, directly how I feel. And then they sent me another package that said, like, peace, I key. Welcome to the Universal Zulu Nation. They sent me this medallion and then infinity lessons that came with it. Oh, that's interesting. That's yeah. And then after that, yeah, then after that, I ran into Easy Rock in Asia because they had the San Diego chapter. Of the, what, the, was the Rock City? Zulu. Oh. Zulu. Zulu, Zulu, okay. Got you. Yeah, we're talking about Zulu. Right, they right, were right, Rock right. City too, right. but they, they got... But they they had a they had a um San Diego Zulu chapter though too as well. Okay, oh, so you ran into the. Then, you didn't even know you didn't even know that that existed. Yeah, not really though. And then after that, I ran into um once I seen once I seen Easy Rock though, bro. He really inspired me to like push Zulu though. To be honest with you, because Easy Rock was super down for Zulu, bro. Like I remember he called Little Caesar out on the, and he had a. Ch- T-shirt that says Zulu Nation, though, on the front, though, bro. And he called Caesar out, though, bro. And, like, I was like, damn, that was kind of bold, though, bro. Like, to call out Caesar when Caesar was at his prime. And um, Caesar didn't come out. Really? I don't, yeah, he, he didn't come out. He kind of just paused, though, in Easy Rock. He had his big old T-shirt that says Zulu Nation. I was like, yo. Wow. That's, that's yeah, cool. Yeah, bro. That was a real history, though. That was probably, like, 90, that was, like, 96. Well, you know, one thing that always stood stood out to me about you, bro, is like, mm-hmm. you know, the um, the the documented history, you know, the history that you document. You know what I'm right. saying? And like that, that was always super cool for me because I'm I love history. 
Oh, you, you know, I'm like a history buff. Yeah. Even, if, yeah, even if it's just you know world history, whatever. You know, history is always my favorite subject, even in high school. You know what I'm saying? So when it comes okay. to like the hip hop history, b boy history, and all that, man, I love all that stuff. I just eat it up. So like, you know, you were one of the first people that was like documenting, you know, small pockets of like scenes and crews and like you know obscure places and stuff like that. Like even ill style rockers, like you know about them. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like so that always like inspired me. You know, you inspired okay. me the way you um, documented history and stuff like that. So. You know, I just want to tell you that. I don't, I don't think I've ever told you that before. I appreciate that because I know, like, back in 2005, I remember I was a big, big deal on B-Boy World, bro, because I put up the K-Mail versus um, Ken Swift. Nobody's ever seen that. Mm -hmm. I put, put that up, bro, and that video went nuts on B-Boy World, though, bro. Erwin, <laughs> he wrote to me, bro. He was like, hey. <laughs> he was like... Bro, like, where are you finding this footage from? I said, I said, this is my footage. These are my tapes, though, bro. I've been collecting tapes consistently since like '91. Wow, wow. So I had, I had everything, though, bro. Like all wow. the, all the programs, all the summits, all the ill star rockers, all the Ohio. I had everything. Chicago. I have footage of just like everybody, though, bro, because I loved hip hop so much that I couldn't believe that there was other states like you guys, like breaking in Ohio. So eventually. I just became like a historian by default because I, I really love breaking though, bro. I'm Zulu. And when I got in Zulu, I took the model of each one, teach one, mm -hmm. not the politics, not like this guy did this or mm -hmm. he's that medallion is not the real Zulu. I cared about the culture though, bro. Right, right, right. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. Your, your collection has got to be crazy. I know it's crazy because you still, I'm sure yeah. you still got all those tapes, right? Yeah. I still got it though, bro. Like everybody knows like that, that like yourself, you know, bro, like I'm the king of videos, like all these videos <laughs> that were ever produced before Korean rock, way before Korean rock, though, bro. Like he mm -hmm. he wasn't around like like when I was when I was collecting this footage, no disrespect to him. But I know a lot of people give Korean rock a lot of credit over mm -hmm. me. But everybody knows even Smurf said it. He was like Mikey Ice was the first. Oh, yeah. Yeah, absolutely, man. Absolutely. So that's really cool. That's really cool. So yeah. I just started collecting again. Oh, you did? Collecting. Yeah, like I, even at the past freezer session, like collecting the DVDs they had and stuff like that. Especially oh, the ones you seen that, that, bro? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, ca I copped uh, the first evolution, the one that we came out with, Street Symphony, before we were Zulu. You know, I was like, man, I yeah, got Yeah, I heard about I mean, that, bro. I heard about that. Tell me about Street Symphony, though, bro. I heard about that crew. Yeah, so Street Symphony was kind of like a Ohio conglomerate, you know, of all the best. Okay. Um, the best b-boys from the, from the state you know we had the best b-boys from cleveland the best b-boys from columbus the best b-boys from cincinnati and mm. and Dayton and Akron, you know and akron and all that so you know that's when me and uh ty because ty and um squirt and squirt um, that's what i was yeah. talking about you didn't mention him yeah. squirt yeah ty, ty squirt um flex they was all right. part of this uh, crew from Dayton, and oh, um, okay. they were starting to make noise. Um, they were called the Four UE. Four, four oh, UE. I never they heard of like that. Four UE. It was uh, Four Universal Elements. It was almost like a like a you know their version of a you know hip hop organization. Okay. And so um, there was a hip hop crew, and so they came up after us. And they started making noise. We started battling them. Like, you know, it was like we started rivaling. And then, you know, so soon enough, we just joined forces. You know, it's like, yo, you know, y'all are dope. We're dope. You know, we just made it a conglomerate. We added um, Brooks and them from Cleveland. And we started going out to the Midwest jams. You know what I'm saying? All over the Midwest and all over the country, actually, even to Florida for the uh, Evolution mm. Jam. So when, when we went to uh before evolution was the free succession eight in right. cali and on the queens mary and i think we we entered a street symphony then oh, and uh, okay we 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 got, got like smoked in the prelims like we we got we got washed <laughs> early and so uh you know we but we <laughs> the one thing that really impressed me was like um the um uh, the uh, unique styles crew when they came out with the shirts, the letters, the old school letters, yeah. and they came out like dance and like they were just like stone cold, right? And I was like, yo, these guys is like fresh, you know what I mean? And they was passing out flyers for this new jam, and it turned out to be Evolution. 
the first one. And we mm. was like, yo, we got to go to this gym. So, you know, we hit the lab. And, um, you know, after we got washed, we went back to the drawing board. We hit the lab. We started practicing even more and more and more. Boom, boom, boom. And then we went out to the Evolution Jam, and, and we actually made noise. You know what I'm saying? We made it all the way to the quarterfinals, and that's when that was like a breakthrough for us. Actually, that jam was we we went from no we was nobodies, you know what I mean? And we actually made it, you know, to the uh, top, you know, the quarterfinals, whatever. Made it to the DVD, made it to the trailer, because you know the trailer came out eight months later, right? You know, on the B Boy world, it was eight months. We had to wait eight nine months before the even trailer come out, and so like we actually made it onto the trailer and all that with our teams and stuff. It's like yo, we were so hyped. It's like yo, we made it. We thought we made it. You know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> but uh, but yeah, that's how um, that's how Street Symphony came about. You know, we just kind of was uh, you know, the top b boys from from um, all the different crews in Ohio, and we kids came together and start we start battling, start traveling out outside of Ohio. Yo. Oh man, that's some you you blessing me with information I've never even heard before, bro. And like I'm like you said, I'm a historian. This is me like adding this knowledge to like my like my books of knowledge because I've heard a lot of stuff, but I've never really heard the Midwest history though, bro. You're the first to tell me this. Oh yeah, man. Oh yeah. Well, you know, you can't talk about Midwest history without mentioning Scribble Jam. Oh yeah. The Scribble Jam really well, that was that was a staple for the Midwest, and that was here in Ohio and Cincinnati oh. since the nineties. Oh yeah, you're right though, bro. Mm -hmm. Yeah, now when I think about that, it mm -hmm. was in Ohio. I tripped out on that though, bro. Mm -hmm. The legendary I battle get, I and I an idea and juice and and you know motion yeah. motion disorders, yeah. Yep, motion disorders, motion disorders, and uh, Chicago tribe and. Um, it was uh, phase TBA, two, phase, phase two, two, and uh, Brickheads, of course. Brick, you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, bro. Yeah. Mm hmm. So, and, and even the Florida Cats would, used to come up, you know, they used to come up. The um, uh, Flipside Kings used to come through, and I was okay. really, I was super inspired by them. Uh, Strife, 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 yeah, Strife, Strife used to come to Ohio because. Uh, his uh, his girl at the time was from here, and she was a big okay. um, Steph. You know what I mean? Steph, shout out to Steph. She was uh, she was a part of uh, Skills Methods at one point. Oh, she was. I know, I didn't know that they had a girl. Yeah, yeah. She was from here. Uh, she was actually one of the first big girls I ever seen break here in, in Ohio. I saw her break at the at a hip hop spot, and she oh. ended up moving to Florida. She linked up with um, Skills Methods for a little bit, started dating Strive, and then she used to bring Strive to Ohio all the time. And Strive mm. would bring all the Flipside Kings. And so, Dang. You know, yeah, we Rudy Goblin, two thousand three. Yep, Rudy. Rudy came with us. I got a funny, you know, funny story about Rudy. We, I think, it was a gym, and I don't know. I don't know if it was Cleveland or Pittsburgh. I can't remember. I, I remember, like I said, my memory's kind of hazy, yeah. but. <laughs> But uh, he actually came with her. They was on their way to a Rocksteady anniversary, and they stopped in Ohio, and they came to the gym where it was at. And, they, you know, jams back then, there was no contest. Right. You know, there was, there was no, there was like, no, it was not a, a competition. It was just a jam. You know, hip-hop jam, b-boys, like, we just throw down and stuff like that. And so we're in the cypher, we're getting down. When Somebody had called us out, and Rudy come out of nowhere. And like I said, everybody was shocked. When Rudy hit the floor, like, everybody just was, like, in awe. <laughs> you know, he, he was so nasty. And, yeah. uh, you know, so we, we had gotten into it, um, me and my crew, because this is my first crew. It was called, we were called Bus One. Bus? Bus One. Okay. Cause we used to call breaking like bust busting, like busting. That's what I called yeah. it. Yeah, you yeah. say yeah. People yeah. say yo, busting, they're busting, down the street, yeah. they busting. <laughs> yeah, bro. We yeah, we didn't even yeah, say yeah, we didn't bro. even say breaking or b boy. They'd be like yo, a hey, bus. Hey, look, they busting. Yeah, that that's what we used to say. Sense yeah. now, bro. Bus yeah. one. Yeah, and we from Columbus. Columbus so had, had like a double meaning. It was bus one. You know, oh, I break in uh, Columbus. So, um, it was only it was only three members. It was my first two, very first two teachers when I was twelve years old. Alan, who went on to be an MC, and then uh, Manny, who went on to be DJ Manuel. He's a he's a a, um, a DMC champion, two time champion. The, from Cali, 
Uh, he lives in Cali now. Okay. Yeah. So, um, but those though that was my crew, Bus One. So, you know, like Dang, we we bro. used to hold it well, down you're... in Ohio. We used to hold it down. So Rudy is like, he's in the cipher with us. Some cats start calling us out, and Rudy's like, he comes up to us like, "Yo, y'all mind if I bring it with y'all?" <laughs> Just like that. He was like, "Yeah, like come on, like, let's go, let's get it." So he actually battled with us. Damn. So he must, he definitely must have seen something in us. You know what I mean? That he was like, "Yo, I want to rock with these guys." And but I was super inspired by Rudy, bro. He was, he was the man. He was the man. Him, he was, he was the man. For me, he was, he was like my favorite people at one point. Okay. Yeah. Okay. okay. Uh, I got a question for you too. Like when you first seen Ramai, like what did you think about him? Like when he, when you first got to actually, when you seen him physically with your own eyes, or have you ever seen him break live? Yeah, but um, you know, in the early days, I never, I never seen him live, only on video. Okay, but when you seen him on, on seen video, him what did you think? What did you think about his style? He was the best. Okay, that's that's my honest opinion when i you know the first couple of years of me starting you know the style elements was the best crew at the time and remind was the star of the crew and and Greg right was his right hand man that's how yeah. i saw it that's true yeah bro. I, he, I, he, man. He, was the man. he was the man there was nobody nobody was seeing him bro because he was so unique <laughs> he had his own, own he had his own style you know he had his own own moves it was, he was completely original completely yeah. original you know the, he did his own thing you know what i'm saying and, and he, was, he was doing he was hard quiet. shit though too though bro he was doing like super hard stuff because you got to think you know you remember the whole style before um, the style elements was like the rock city style or the, the mm -hmm. west coast power style you know what i'm saying and that was pretty much it you know and that style was it this game, they completely revolutionized the way, you know, people broke. Yeah. You know, they they was like, hey, you know, you could be funky and be original and have your own style, do your own thing and still be b-boy. You know what I mean? Yeah. It was and it was revolutionary. Jose. Jose's here. Yep. No doubt about it, bro. No doubt about it. No 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 doubt. Y'all want to share Hey, Vix, I want to share a story with you. I got Jose on here, though, bro. Mm -hmm. I remember I seen Jose, and um, Jose, to me, bro, he was he was a diehard, though, bro. Like, that dude would, like, bring it, though, bro. I had a lot of respect for Jose. So when he, he told me that he was down with you guys, I thought that was crazy because Bakersfield, from where I stayed, was only... Oh, you're talking about Carlos. Yeah, Jose, think, Carlos. Think about who you think, what are you talking about when you say Jose? I'm thinking... Jose from the, from the Bay. Oh, okay, Car Carlos. Oh, Rican. I'm thinking Rican. Oh, okay, okay. Um, yeah. <laughs> Heresy. Okay, there we okay. go. Heresy. Heresy. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So when, because Heresy was only a few hours away from me, but when he told me that he met you guys, I was like, "Yo, bro, you went to Ohio?" He was like, "I thought that was crazy." <laughs> yeah, bro. Yeah, like I said, I just did an interview um with Just Rock. It hasn't came out yet. But I go into detail. I talk about Hurry C. I talk about, you know, Bus One. I talk about Street Symphony. I, you know, I, do, I go into detail about all that. But yeah, Hurry C was definitely vital. Vital. You know, he came to, came to my life at a piv pivotal point. He came to Ohio to go to Bible college. Oh, I didn't know that, bro. Yeah. He came to go okay. to Bible college, and that's where I met him at. And then, because uh, we used to break in the church. That's where we used to break at. That's where I, was le that's where I learned to break at. Was in the church. What? Yeah. What year was that? Um, in ninety seven. Oh, ninety seven. Yeah. Well, that's when I started, but I didn't okay. meet him till ninety. It was uh, two thousand three. Yeah. Two thousand three, he came, and so uh, well, I met him before that because he had came to visit, and he mm. saw his break and stuff like that. Um, but he was just visiting, so I met him before that. But then in two thousand three, he came to go to school. And okay, so that's and so that's when we started, you know, practicing together. Mm. We started practicing together, and you know, like he really, he re really helped me to level up when it comes to footwork. You know, mm -hmm. you know how to flow. You know, I was doing a lot of sets before that, and he taught me how to 
how to flow with my footwork, how to freestyle it with the found mm -hmm. when you, foundational moves, and also put, put my own flair in it. Like he taught me, he taught me all that. You know what I'm saying? And um, I actually went to Cali with him to Bakersfield for three months in 2000, and I think it was 2005. Look, Jose wrote, I mean, Heresy wrote, 2002, we met in 2004, we went to college. Mm -hmm. Yeah, he, he went to college and he came. And that's when we started okay. practicing together. And so it, then we put him down with um, Street Symphony right away. Oh, so he, he was in street symphony okay oh yeah oh yeah yeah he was he was a, one of the stars bro <laughs> <laughs> yeah man he really put us on for real like he, he he blessed us you know he came through to ohio we started traveling going out that's when we started traveling and going out in different places and stuff like that and it was cool because we wasn't really nobody you know we wasn't nobody at that time you know we were mm -hmm. new faces you know what i'm saying and especially when we linked up with zulu you know mzk you know, we linked up with Phantom, and he was a new face. Nobody, he had never traveled out before. So we was like all these new faces that we came out. We had our own style and a different connection. So, you know, but yeah, yeah definitely hurry see, you know, me going to uh, Bakersfield. I stayed in Bakersfield with him for three months, and we just oh, did nothing. Did you, did you ever come across Tyrell, or did you know who Tyrell is? Mm -hmm. Spidey? I heard, oh. heard about him. Yeah, I remember him. From watching oh videos with the uh, roller skates on, bro. He made this thing called the Spidey Swing, where he can do the flare this way, flare this way, mm -hmm. flare this way. That was some impossible ish, though, bro. To That's be honest with you, that slow. was he was the only one. He was the only one in Cali that could do that move because it was his move. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I remember that. I remember that. And, uh, you know, Hurry always puts me puts me on with the, the history of the Bakersfield and stuff like that. You know, oh, you know about freestyle? No, no, I don't know about. Freestyle. Okay. Freestyle from Bakersfield, though, too. That's like a that's an original crew from Bakersfield freestyle. Okay. There was they actually battled the Renegades at Radiotron. If you watch it, freestyle versus the Renegades. OK, that's interesting. Yeah, yeah. Who's in there? Who's in that squad? Uh, it was the Renegades. It was Jazzy J, Wicked, Politics, um, a dude named Blue Boy, and then on Freestyle, it was Jarrett, Mark, and um, Jarrett, Mark, and Manuel, which is his name is Manny, Manny Styles. He's from Bakersfield. Manny, he became no a Manny. part of. Yeah, Manny's from Bakersfield, and he no joined no the Manny. Renegades. Though, yeah, he joined the Renegades later, but his original crew is Freestyle from Bakersfield. Got you, got you, and then he. And then he became part of another crew, didn't he? Um, as far as I know, I think Manny only stuck with the Renegades to be. No, he was in another crew before that, and um, Hersey knows this. They were called the X Men. The X Men. He became right. no after Freestyle. He joined X Men, and then after X Men, he joined the Renegades. Okay, all right. That's the yeah, story and, right and there, and, bro. And he used to, from what I understand, what Hersey tells me, he used to dance with um a guy named Ace a lot. Oh I think yeah, Ace. 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 Which Master he might have been from LA. Master yeah. Movement. There Master you go. Movement crew. Yeah. Yeah, they were, was nice, bro. They was nice. I seen footage of them. They was ill. They was ill. Yeah. Honestly, though, bro, like, I don't know, like, really too much about, like, the new, new scene today, but Cali in the 90s, though, bro, we were like the dream team, though, bro. Yeah. Anybody from Cali? When they went to the East Coast, Ohio, whatever, bro, everybody came back with first place, especially when Ruin mastered the air floor. Once he mastered the air floor, the fool went to the East Coast, bro. He just started smoking like everybody. Mm -hmm. Yeah, He's definitely. the one that came up with all those variations, though, bro. The diamond, straight leg, that's right. all him. Right, until Omar came out. <laughs> until Exactly, and that was his rivalry. Once Omar right. came out. And he started blasting, blasting back. <laughs> That's true. Yeah. Um, hey, Vic, so let me ask you, was Sacramento Flexible Flay, was that the original Zulu Kings for uh, when Zulu Kings first came back? Was it was it Flexible Flay first? So, all right. So uh, first, the first person to ever be put down from the resurrection of the of the Zulu Kings, the Mighty Zulu Kings mm -hmm. from 2000 uh, was Cream Monk. Cream was the original. Vice President, and he was the first one to get oh, down. Okay. And then from there, it was the Radio Rock crew. 
So, uh, you know, oh, after being by the gave, okay. after being by the gave the, you know, the permission to, um, to Ness, you know, to go and recruit for the Zulu Kings, right? The mighty Zulu Kings. Okay. And, uh, so he, he, he started in, in the Bronx and that was, that was mm. the first place he started. And from the Bronx, he branched out. He went to Texas. He put the giant turkeys down. He went to Cali, put the yeah. turkeys down. You know, so he was going to different places and he was putting the whole crews down. And that's mm-hmm. how it started. That's how it originally started. But the difference was when he got to the Midwest with us, see, we battled uh, at a jam called Ill Bricks in, okay. in Ch- Champaign, Illinois. This was right after I had just went to Bakersfield and trained with Hurry C. I came back to Ohio, was on fire. And mm. when we had linked up with Taekwon and Dedicate, we went to Ill Bricks. This was 2005, I think it was. And uh, we, we, uh, Ness was there and he was a judge. And that was the first time I, I had never met Ness. Because, okay. like, even before that, like a couple weeks before that, Taekwon was like, yo, Ness is going to be there, Alien Ness. And I was like, who's Alien Ness? I didn't even know. I didn't know mm. who he was. He sent me a video, I think it was like Blueprint or something like that, a clip of it. And I was like, yo, this guy's official. Like, he's like the real deal. So um, yeah. we went up there, we met him, we took the workshop and stuff like that. He taught us the hook drill. And we took that hook drill and we flipped it and made a whole routine out of it. And we won the whole battle from that routine. Oh, okay. So, like, Ness was like super impressed by us. He walked up to us. He was like, yo, Street Symphony, Zulu Kings in full effect for the wet Midwest. <laughs> <laughs> and that's and that's how we, that's exactly how we got down, you know. But the difference is, see, before that, he was putting whole crews like Flex Flay, Ready to Rock, and Jive Turkeys. Yeah. And all these crews, they're already part of other crews. So they didn't really, you know, they just kind of looked at it like it was like an honor to be mentioned but they wasn't they was all about their their crew first mm-hmm. right so when we got down you know taekwon he kind of like saw the vision you know he saw a different mm. vision for the for the crew right away you know what i'm saying he was like yo let's let's link up like let's organize you know what i mean he's always been an organizer so he got us all together okay. you know he said yo we're gonna enter as zulu kings as a crew you know what i'm saying and we went to evolution two so this is this you mm. know after the first one we came back as Zulu Kings and that's when I met Floor Fana and I met Machine and oh. Poe and, and Cream and everybody and Ness introduced us all and he was like yo we we're the Zulu Kings like we're gonna enter and we're gonna do this and that was the first time we we uh, presented ourselves as a crew no. and battled as a crew. Oh, mm-hmm. dang, bro! I never knew this so too. Yeah. Yeah, as a matter of fact, the Evolution 1 and Evolution 2 were so pivotal for us. I bought them. That's why I rebought them at Free Succession this past this past year. I, I got both of the DVDs for the, for those reasons. And who was the um who was the Asian guys that you guys were battling at Evolution? Was it Evolution? Which Evolution? It was the one where all you guys were battling like it was like a Korean third, crew though, on one side. One. That was the third one. That was right. Who was that? Before evolution uh that was a evolution um three at uh, i think it was 2000 2007 right before okay. the free session that we won when we battled gamblers that's the battle though yeah. bro. the music yeah, quality, the music gamblers. the musicality in that breaking is is ridiculous though bro mm-hmm. super and high yeah. oh yeah super yeah high. That, that's when that's when we started to bring like the, the rock you know we started to introduce the rock into into our flavor in the battles and stuff like that. that with our routines, I, you know. Seen that though, bro. You guys, you guys got me hyped though, bro. When I seen you guys break, I thought to myself, breaking's coming back though, bro. I mean, like the the energy because <laughs> like her C would come out, you would you would do a commando, Jules would do a commando, and you guys were just like cutting these dudes off though, bro. You didn't. It's like you guys didn't want to give them a chance. I was like, dang, these guys are like savages though, <laughs> fool. They just cut them off in the middle of the battle. Stabbing them, oh man! Bro, we had that fire, man. We had that fire, bro. No doubt about it. You know, when we had different, we brought a different. I feel like we brought a different um aspect to the game. You know, a different approach. You know, like I said, we brought brought the rock. You know, flavor. You know what I'm saying? We we had a lot of uh funk. You know, we had a lot. 
funk in our style, which that was definitely lacking at the time. Exactly. You know, the exactly. funk was missing. And so we, we kind of brought a funk style with our footwork and our with our tops and the rock and everything like that. And, you know, we brought the battle, that battle mentality, which other people had, obviously, before us. But we, we brought that, too, with us. You know what I'm saying? So we're like, we're here. We're doing it. You know what I'm saying? Like, what's up? Yeah, I remember when you guys started really showing out, though, bro, like, you guys were like a big deal, bro, especially on B-Boy World. <laughs> B-Boy, they were writing stories about you guys, though, bro. And, like, you guys you guys received a lot of hate, though, too. Yeah, we did. Yeah, we did. Yeah. Why is that? Of, I think a lot of people didn't understand uh, our approach, you know? Okay. I, I think a lot of people were kind of trained to look at a break a certain way, you know? Mm-hmm. And they, they wouldn't really, they wasn't really connected to, you know, the essence, the way we were, you know what I mean? Like, like being around Ness and being around, you know, Phantom and, and being around a lot of the OGs from New York and being connected to New York, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like we, we had a, we had a original like flavor, like a, like a B-boy flavor that came from mm-hmm. like New York and, um, you know, a lot of people didn't they over they didn't really understand it at the time. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? I think a lot of people was afraid of it though too because it was it was pretty aggressive. It wasn't it's like you guys didn't back down. Like even if they were like trying to kill you guys over like like overdo it with the power, you guys always still brought the the matching routines and you and it was like a commando to it was like a straight commandos though, bro. Right. And I think a right. lot of crews couldn't like they couldn't handle like all the commandos you guys were throwing. I'll give you a perfect example. Chicago. You know, mm. Chicago was known for the power moves. Right. In fact, I remember even at that time, they were said, saying, FB boy, we was breakdancers. We do power moves. Like, that was their mentality. You know, they mm-hmm. was on that. They wasn't trying to do footwork. They don't care about b-boying. They wanted mm. to do power moves. We're breakdancers. That's how they was talking. Yeah. And, you know, and at first, when we started to branch out, like, we went to City vs. City in 03, and we got washed. You know what I'm saying? Mm. They, they 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 just destroyed us, and we were nobodies. But through time, we started we started leveling up, and you know, thanks to Ilsa Rockers, you know what I'm saying? Thanks to Ness and different, you know, and oh, okay. uh, Phantom and different different influences, we started to come with our own approach. And now we were actually bringing it, but we didn't have to do their style. You know, we. Mm brought it with our own style with flavor mm-hmm. so now our flavor is just as nice and it's just as appealing as their power moves and mm-hmm. that was different you know it was you know i'm saying that was different people weren't used to seeing someone combat you know a, a ill power run with 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 a flavor route and just being like just as nice or better and you when you saying? guys were at, when you guys were at freestyle session um they booed you guys when you won, huh? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> That's crazy, yo. That's crazy. It That's it was crazy, like it was bro. the first time a real B-Boys had actually won freestyle session. Yeah. That's what I'm reading what um That's the track two set. So I remember you when know, you guys we won though, bro. Like we were definitely controversial. Everybody was like Everybody was hot though, bro. I remember after you guys won, it's like this is like the MySpace days though, bro. It was like it was all over MySpace that Zulu Kings won freestyle session though, bro. And I remember mm-hmm. and then um then you guys come back uh, was it like a following year though too? Yeah, we came back. We came back almost every year. But uh, you know, okay. the same thing happened the same thing happened in the Queen Mary with uh, when Rock City battled um battled monkeys. Remember that? Yeah. They mm-hmm. Rock Steady won that and the crowd started booing <laughs> you know and Poe one got off his chair and he said what's up you know who won i know and nobody could step <laughs> you know what i'm saying and we did the same thing when they when the crowd started booing we was like what's up you know and i think it was because we were you know we we were different you know what i'm saying we were different and a lot of us we were new faces you know we were we were uh just up and coming so people weren't used to us people didn't know what to expect and we brought our own style, and I think a lot of people were just trained to look at break it, like I said, a certain way. Yeah. And so they didn't overlook, you know, the subtle, the subtle, you know, nuances to uh, what we were doing. Mm. 
that's that's pretty yeah you nailed it though bro i thank you for um sharing that um that's pretty crazy though um so let me ask you like this is just kind of something a little bit that i've been wanting to ask you a little bit off the subject so how do you feel about like zulu as a whole when i say zulu as a whole meaning like when the scandal came out like with bambada i know it's a lot of people just they didn't want nothing to do with Zulu anymore, though. Like, what was your opinion on that? Um. Well, you know, I was pretty. You know, I had heard rumors. You know what I'm saying? Well, okay. let me let me go back. Let me go back. Okay. First of all, I never. I kind of never. You know, had, I never felt a connection with the Zulu with the Zulu nation. And I'll tell okay. you why. Because well, first, first of all, you know, we're part of the Zulu King legacy that predates the Zulu nation. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So we never had to follow Zulu nation rules. We were never official Zulu nation chapter. We didn't pay dues. We didn't have IDs. You know what I'm saying? We used to go to the anniversaries to support, you know, but when mm -hmm. we went, they kind of treated us a certain way. You know what I'm saying? Oh, they did? Yeah. So, okay. you know, that, so even though we were there, we supported and stuff like that. You know, oftentimes it would always try to check us and try to treat us different and this and that. Mm. And so, um, you know, we were always pretty distant from the Zulu Nation, but we were also affiliated in a lot of ways, obviously. But at the same time, we were also disconnected from them. Okay. Being that, you know, our legacy comes predates the Zulu Nation, you know. Mm. So my, my, you know, our connection was always to the original Zulu Kings, not to the Zulu Nation, you know. But we always looked at them like a fam, you know what I'm saying? Like, you know, they're, they're, they're peoples, you know, certain pe certain ones in there always had our back, you know what I'm saying? You know, certain people, mm -hmm. Yoda, you know what I'm saying? Okay. Rest Yoda, you know, yeah. there was uh, Red Dragon. A lot, of, a lot of the guys, you know, they, they loved us and, you know, we had love for them. And a lot of them defended us, you know what I'm saying? But a lot of them hated on us, too. So, um, mm. so it was a, we always, always had attention with them. You know okay. what I mean? So, um, so uh, you know, just, you know, being, you know, being, you know, through the years, you know, repping the Zulu Kings, stuff like that, you know, I had heard rumors, you know, that this and that was happening with Bam and mm -hmm. stuff like that. But I didn't know what, if it was true or not. Because if you're, if it's a rumor, you don't know if it's true or not. It's just people talking. Just rumors, mean? yeah. So, you know, it was like, okay, you know, I, I heard it. I heard about it, but I didn't really think nothing of it too much. And um uh, yeah. Yeah, Mark Love. Yep. But um yeah, uh so what was I saying? Um yeah, so when the scandal came out, we um you know, we put out the public statement and said, Hey, look, we yeah. are officially not affiliated with the Zulu Nation in any way. My first reaction was like, Okay, I guess the rumors is true and all that, this is bad. This is a bad look. But at the same time, I felt like it was kind of cool, like not cool, but it was OK because, you know, I, it was like to me, my, my impression was like, we don't need to be idolizing these people. I think we put these people on too big of a pedestal. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And that was kind of my knee jerk reaction it was like, yo, why are we putting our trust and our faith in these people? They're just people. You know what okay. I mean? And mm -hmm. so, you know, that, that was just goes to show. You know what I mean? It just, just goes to show, like, never put your faith in man. You know what I'm saying? We mm. need to put our faith in God alone. You know, and I think people make gods out of human beings, and we shouldn't. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Especially in the Zulu Nation. You know what I'm saying? Okay. So that was kind of my thing. But at the same time, I didn't really want to give up on the Zulu Nation. You know? I didn't want to give up on the Zulu Nation. I felt like the Zulu Nation still, you know, had good elements to it. And I feel like I want. I feel like I wanted to see. Um, how would you? How would I put it? Like a, a reformation in okay. the Zulu Nation. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. And and I was uh, I was hoping for that. You know, and I, and I was I wanted to see that because of the history of Zulu Nation so rich. You know what I'm saying? And you know all of the Zulu started hip hop. Yeah, yeah Zulu started yeah, hip hop. Yeah, yeah, so so rich. You know, so I didn't want to give up on. It. I said, you know, I felt like I had hope that you know there would be a mm -hmm. some sort of uh, revolution or a reformation in the Zulu Nation. That was my hope, you know, going forward. But right. like I said, we had a, um, put out a statement and said, hey, we're not affiliated in any way. And then after that, my mentality was like, 
you know, I I kind of my hope was more in the uh, MZK, and I I wanted to see MZK become what the Zulu Nation how they dropped the ball. You know what I'm saying? Oh, they, okay. they were meant to be in the culture. Mm -hmm. You know, I wanted to see MZK kind of pick up that ball and and run with it. You know what I'm saying? And you know, I still I still have that hope and that dream for for MZK. You know, just to be bigger than just a crew. Right. You know what I'm saying? And really be a a force and a movement and within hip hop that people can look to and to be inspired by. So once that, that scandal happened, you guys decided to call it MZK Lifestyle. Yes, yes. Uh, well, we actually, you know, we actually we we were throwing around ideas. We had a couple. We had a lot of meetings, and we didn't really know what direction to to go with. You know, we were kind of facing a in a in a situation because you know we didn't want to be affiliated with the Zulu Nation, but then our name is still Zulu. You know what I'm saying? Exactly. So it's like you know how do we how do we go about you know still repping our crew, but then not giving the off the impression that we're part of the Zulu Nation. So, you know, mm -hmm. um, so we threw around a couple ideas. You know, we we went we we tried to push by going going by the acronym MZK, which we always went by anyway. So we you know pushed the acronym, and then we you know did the lifestyles, and then from there was um, the um, you know MZK worldwide, which we still are. Okay, you know what I mean, but. But after, you know, things started to calm down, and I think we kind of like overreacted a little bit, you know what I'm mm -hmm. saying? And realized it's not really a, that huge of a deal. You know, it's just a name, you know what I'm saying? So it was like, you know, it's like, it's okay. We could still rap our, 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 you know, us, you know, because like I said, the Zulu Kings predate the Zulu Nation anyway. And then, and besides that, the, Zulu, the, the real Zulus, you know, have no affiliation with the Zulu Nation either. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So it's like, it's okay, you know, we can still have our name and we can still rep us, you know what I'm saying? And we can still be disassociated with the Zulu Nation and it's no problem, you know? But I yeah. think originally, I think originally there was kind of like a, you know, like a withdrawal, like a, like a, mm -hmm. like a backlash, like, you know, we need to do something, you know, we need to separate, we need to make it clear that, you know, we're mm -hmm. not, we're not associated with the Zulu Nation. Can I share my, my, um, my opinion on that too, if you don't mind. Yeah, absolutely. Okay. okay. Um, for me, when I first heard it, like I was heartbroken though, bro, because I seen Zulu bring races together. I've never seen in my life. When I went to the B-Boy Summit in 96, I heard the DJ say, what's the name of this nation? And he turned on the music and everybody said, Zulu, Zulu. And it was 5,000 people at the summit, though, bro. I met mm. DJ Lacey. Mm. He was like, hey, man, what's up? DJ Lacey representing the UK, Zulu. I've never met anybody from another country, though, that was Zulu. He was the first person I ever met mm. that was Zulu from Europe was DJ Lacey. Wow. That's amazing. Right. And then I met Zulu like Gremlin. Yeah. And then I met Zulu Gremlin. <laughs> and I started, I met Mark Love. I started meeting, like, all these different people. and. For me, I can never personally walk away from Zulu because if it wasn't for Zulu, I I, I don't think I would have reached as far as I would have got. I think they were kind of like my vessel, like to, you know, to like to be a pioneer, you know, for the culture. Mm -hmm. I was already Mikey Ice before I was Zulu, but Zulu was like, it was like a, to me, it was like, it was everything, bro, yeah. because they, they were the ones that were just like, they were at the front line. Everybody was down with Zulu, brand Nubians. Mm -hmm. Tribe Called Quest, De La Soul. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Everybody was Zulu, bro, in hip hop. So I was like, yo, I'm trying to get down with these guys. Oh, you yeah. know? So, yeah. so when everybody kind of jumped ship, I just said, you know what, I'm just going to stay quiet. And I, and once they said Lil Wayne was down with Zulu, I was like, ah, oh, did you hear about that? Yeah. Yeah, I remember that. <laughs> I was like, bro, Lil Wayne. <laughs> Well, Little Wing was on was on fire at that time too. He, he was, was like was though, bro. He was like at his prime. He was though, bro. And in my mind, I'm thinking like, why would he ever want to get down with Zulu? Once he got that, I think it it kind of like that was like the beginning shift. of the yeah, yeah. That was the shift though, because everybody started questioning Zulu. You know what I'm saying? And um, to this day, I don't know how people really personally feel about it, but like how you said, like. 
if it really wasn't for that, like we wouldn't we wouldn't even have a culture to dance with, to be honest with you. Like they started it all though, bro. So you have to respect that. You might not respect the actions of what somebody's done or the rumors, but the fact that Zulu started that, that's the reason why we have Beaver, the original Zulu Kings and everybody else though, bro. They were the first B boys. Yeah, I mean, you can't deny the contributions, bro. Just because of the yeah. moral failures of 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 the leader, you know what I'm saying? Doesn't you can't judge? You know what I'm saying? You can't judge the whole as a you unit. You can't judge an individual the mistakes. Yeah. yeah, one individual mistakes. You don't have. That means everybody got to pay for it. You know. Mm hmm. Right. I mean, but you know. Obviously, there's, you know, there's a trickle down effect as far as the consequences, you know, of his actions, obviously, you know, and all that. But like you said, you know, I, I you know, you can't take away the contributions, no. you know, to the culture. You, you can't change history. You can't change no. history. No matter what, no matter what you, you know, no matter what you do, look at American history. Exactly. You know, that's a big, that's a big debate going on right now. They, they were, the founding fathers had moral failures. But well, you can't, mm -hmm. you can't erase history. You know what I'm saying? They did a lot, a lot of good too. You know what I mean? This right. for them that we actually have this society that we're living in today. Exactly. You know what I mean? Exactly. And so it's it's the same thing, bro. It's no different. You know what I mean? So, you know, it's like I said, I always hope for the reformation, you know, in the Zulu nation. And I think it's still possible, but it's going to be very difficult, bro, because of the leadership and it, beyond the scandal, right? I my problem with the Zulu nation even before was mm -hmm. was the the leadership you know the lack okay. of leadership and the unity you know mm. the lack of unity within the, the the leadership you know what i'm saying okay just that alone you know that kind of like you know threw me off and pushed me away from ever wanting to be a part and and not to mention the esoteric you know the whole esoteric aspect of it you know what i'm saying i was never feeling that you know what I mean? As far as okay. me and my faith and different things like that, you know, my relationship with the Lord, I was, I'm not feeling a lot of the, um, you know, the, how would you call it, um, quasi-religious, you know, notions in the lessons. Mm -hmm. and that. So, um, but, so, but, you know, but I respect, you know, I definitely respect the Zulu Nation, you know, they, they did a lot, you know, there was a huge movement. I mean, hip hop wouldn't be hip hop what it is today if it wasn't for them. So, Zulu you know what Nation, and there's a lot blacks of and Puerto Rican all over the world that still exists, you know, and they're still doing good and positive things. You know what I'm saying? So, it's, there's no hate there. You know what I'm saying? Good luck, the best of luck to them. Yeah. Zulu Nation was the first hip hop organizations to bring blacks and Latinos together. Mm -hmm. Boricuas. <laughs> Everybody yeah. knows that. That's from the East Coast. Like there was, Boricos was down with Zulu too. Like when it first came out, though, bro. Mm. Oh yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, you know what I'm saying. So, you know, it's really up to it's really up to the leadership, man. You know what I'm saying. Mm -hmm. How however strong the leadership is, you know, that's how that's how strong the the movement and the organization is going to be. You know what I'm saying. And for me, that was that was the main thing for me that. You know that I didn't see, I didn't see happening in the Zulu Nation. That's them getting their leadership together. You know, everybody's on different pages. Nobody, or you know, and it, and I get it because it's so large. Mm -hmm. You know, it's so large. Like it would take a lot, a lot, a lot to get everybody on the same page. You know, and so that's why a lot of different factions ended up happening. You had a lot of splits. You know, mm -hmm. you had a lot of splinters, and and that's what happens with a lot, a lot of organizations. You know. And they start sponsoring because the organizations have difference of opinions. And, Rock you know, Zulu Nation, yep, yep. Zulu Nation is no different, you know what I'm saying? So, but as far as you, you know what I'm saying? I completely understand where you're coming from. And I yeah. totally agree with you. I totally agree with you as far as, you know, how powerful of a movement that it, it was and still is. You know what I'm saying? And, um, you know, to be affiliated with it still means a lot. You know, and you want to yeah. uh, push the good, the good message, and keep the keep the um, right. You know, keep the good. Um, you know, the positivity that that mm -hmm. they've always represented part of it. Keep it going. You know what I'm saying? That's, yeah, that, I don't have no problem with that. Yeah, I was happy with. I mean, I was happy with it because I reached the point. Um, I became a Zulu king within my chapter. Mm -hmm. You know, and even around the world, 
people that Zulu, like they address me by that. They don't say Mikey Eyes, they say Peace King because they know that I stayed in Zulu from 94 to where it's at right now. So that's like 27 years that I've been Zulu straight. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That's a long time though, bro. That's a long time to stay down with something though, to be honest with you. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah. yeah. You know, it wasn't easy though, bro, because when I was Zulu, it was like, it was only Easy Rock in Asia right after me as far as like on the B-Boy tip though, you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. And then eventually it started catching on and then I heard about you guys. Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah, I heard about you guys later though because, and um, you know, uh, um, that's just the way it is though. But another thing I want to ask you though too before, you know, it gets too late, I've noticed that in today's times, there's a lot of, um, there's a lot of things that, What's going on in the world and i noticed that you have a, a strong relationship with god though like why is that really important to you as an individual today to um not only to be a b-boy but to have a relationship with god well uh whew, that's a loaded question great great question bro yeah um you know it's important to me because well you know my connection to god really gets my dance purpose okay you know what I'm saying? Before, you know, um, you know, I was raised. I was raised in the church. My father, uh, my father was uh, was a, was a, he was like into drugs, and the, he's from the. My parents are from the Bronx. Oh, they're so, Bronx. You know, my, it's okay. Yeah. So my 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 dad grew up with ten siblings mm -hmm. in a one bedroom mm -hmm. apartment in the Bronx. And oh, single mom. <laughs> mm -hmm. So it's like by the time he was like six, seven, eight years old, he's like living in the streets already. You know what I'm oh, saying? Oh, really? Okay. It's like he was in the he was a hippie in the '60s. You know, teenager. He went to Woodstock. You know, and to make a long story short, he had a, a conversion experience in jail in Rikers Island. Mm -hmm. He read the book Cross and the Switchblade, which they made a movie out of, and they have a soundtrack that has breaks on it. So okay. I, I could, I can show you the um, album. I have to dig through it, but I have like three copies of it. But anyways, um, he read the book, and the book is about a preacher that went to the um, Harlem, and went to New York, and ran into it's a true story mm -hmm. of, of the uh, he he changed the life of these gang members okay. from New York, and so like they th had threatened him with like you know knives and you know switchblades and all this, mm -hmm. and he went right in the middle of their rumble. And was like preaching at them, and then he likes he he you know changed their lives, and so that that's what the book is about. So my father read that book as a as a in his early twenties in jail, and he made a mm -hmm. promise to God. He said, "God, if you get me out of jail, then I'll turn my life around and I'll serve you too." Mm -hmm. And so, so the very next you know soon after that he went before the judge and the judge was a Jewish man. He said, I don't know why, but for some reason I'm going to let you go. I'm going to get, I'm going to let you off the hook mm. and I'm going to give you a second. Mm. Yes. So God honored his prayer. God heard his prayer. And so my father honored his, his, uh, you know, his, uh, how do you say, you know, his promise to God. Mm -hmm. And he went and went, went to the rehab where the, uh, you know, the, the preacher and all that, you know, he reached out to them. And so he went mm -hmm. to a rehab program. They were called Teen Challenge. It's similar to uh, uh, Victory Outreach, if you know about Victory okay. Outreach. Yeah, we have that out here. Right. So it's similar to that, but it's on the East Coast called uh, Teen Challenge. So he okay. went through that program and whatever like that. So my father grew up, you know, so I grew up, um, you know, I grew up, you know, learning learning about God, knowing about, you know, my, my father's experience with God. And so, but when I got older, I had to make decisions for myself, you know what I'm saying? And I turned away, you know, I, I chose to, to do me for, for many, many years, like from my uh, early twenties to uh, close to my thirties, almost 10 years. Mm -hmm. And that's when I was, that's when I was, you know, wholeheartedly dancing, pursuing dance. And I wanted to make a name for myself and it was all about me. And then it was all about getting that fame and that recognition in, in my dance and the respect from everybody because I wanted to be that man. You know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? Like many of us do. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And so, you know, to make a long story short, you know, I'm living a life. I'm living in New York. I'm in Brooklyn. I'm, I'm doing my dance career. And, uh, you know, I'm top of the world. You know, we freestyle session, you know, 
you know, champions and, you know, <laughs> you, you know, we live in the life, you know, and I'm, I'm doing everything I wanted to do. And that's what happened. See, when I started to actually reach all of my goals, that's when I found that I was the most depressed. Oh, shoot. You know what okay. I mean? Because it's like, you know, when you have all these ambitions and like you want to do all these things, boom, boom, boom. But when you actually, you know, when you achieve them, that's when it's like, okay, what's next? You know what I'm saying? What do I mm. do? You know what I'm saying? Like, what else is there? What's life? I'm not fulfilled still. I'm supposed to be. You know what I mean? But I'm not. What's wrong? You know, and I started to get depressed, even though I had everything I thought I wanted. And then that's when mm -hmm. I had experience with God. And God showed me. You know what I mean? He said, hey, hey what you're looking for, you can only find it with me. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? And when I had that experience and I had the revelation and I felt the Lord all over and it was it was an intensified electric feeling. You know what I'm saying? And I realized at that moment that God, you know, God gave me dance, not for myself, mm -hmm. but it's for him. You know what I'm saying? It's to, it's to use my platform and, and to reflect God and his gift that he's given me. You know what I'm saying? Once, Psalm, yeah, Psalms 149, when you sing and praise his name through dance. Ooh, come on. You know what I'm saying? That's it, mm -hmm. bro. That's it. So, you know, that's when I started to feel fulfilled, you know, when I realized what the purpose of my life was. And it was to glorify God with my talents, which is dance. Right. You know what I'm saying? So now it's not all me, 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 you know, selfish-centered, ego. I'm the illest. We're the rawest. You know what I'm saying? Look at us. All about us. You know what I'm saying? But nah, it's actually not about us. It's about him. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. That, that's, the, that's, the, that's the most positive message that you could give, in my opinion, through my experience. That's what I've found. You know what I'm saying? So that's, and that's why it's so important for me. And that's why what I hope people take out of this video, too, though, not only are we talking about b-boy history, mm -hmm. but we're talking about the salvation of your soul, because we're all going to pass away one day. There it is. There it is. And when you stand before God, he's not going to ask you, did you win freestyle session? <laughs> did you win? I would be like, uh, You know what I'm saying? Yeah. You didn't win evolution, you're not getting in. No, he's not going to say that. You know what I'm saying? He's going to say, what did you you do with my son you know what i'm saying did he's you gonna know? say when you was alive did you speak about my son did you tell I, people about my son right do you acknowledge my son and what he did for you did he said you know what i can say though his life for yours to cover your sins and you know what i can say vic mm -hmm. i can say i did december december what's 10th mm -hmm. December 10, 2022, we did. <laughs> Proudly. <laughs> Proudly, bro. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go, man. Man, you give me high five right now, bro. I'm just That's I'm what it's about though, bro. That's why I wanted that's why I wanted to reach out to you because I'm I'm on that tip though too though, bro. Like I I learned, you know, and I, I was the same way I wanted to be everything, but then once I started seeing my friends pass away and I think about to myself, it's like they made the transition, though. You know what I'm saying? But I wonder, mm -hmm. like, like, how did God see their life? Like, once, the, once the, they're before them, like, there's no more breaking. There's no more pumas. There's no more. Only thing you got is the spirit that you have, and you have to answer for your actions. Yeah, right. And there's no way that you can, like, escape it because that's the final call. Bingo. Bingo. That's it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you can't hide. No, you can't go across the street. You can't, like. Be like, oh, I'll talk to you later. I don't know. You have to speak up for yourself. You gotta face it. You gotta face it. You know, you, we all mm -hmm. have to be accountable for our actions and for our lives. We have mm -hmm. to. It's only right. It's only right. And he doesn't want perfect. He doesn't want perfect. I'm pretty sure you make mistakes. I make mistakes. But I learned the one thing that they want is relationship. He doesn't want religion. He go. doesn't want perfect. There you he go. He wants relationship. That's it. That's it. That's it. He wants to, he wants to know us. He, he wants us to know him. You know what I'm saying? He wants to speak to us. He wants us to speak to him. You know what I'm saying? Your life he gets better, he though, Vic, to be honest. Him. Right. Your life gets better, to be honest with you. Your life gets better. Before I used to think, man, when you start serving God, you got to cut down on all the fun. You ain't going to be able to have fun like the people in the world. But once you started actually serving him, 
him, he started blessing you in other aspects that people can't see in your life. Only you and him know. That's why it's called relationship. Yeah, you're exactly right. And all that, all that fun out there, you know, in the world and all the, the worldly pleasures and all that. Yeah, it's fun for a season. You know what I'm saying? Then it's going to get But at the end, old. it brings death. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? I'd rather make the sacrifice now and have eternal life forever. <laughs> yeah. It's like you know having, I mean? it's like when people put full coverage insurance on their car, you're putting full coverage insurance on your soul. Yeah, absolutely. And, and, the, and, the, and, there's, and, the, and the benefits, you know, the benefits outweigh in this life too. You know what I'm saying? Oh, the yeah, bro. The benefits of having the assurance of God in our lives and every day. You know what I'm saying? Far exactly. Far outweigh, you know, fleeting pleasures. You know, that's why, I, that's why I, my name is Vix the Vapor. Okay. Because it comes from the book of James, you know? Oh, all right. And when it says, the life is like a vapor, it's here one moment and then it vanishes. Mm, thanks for sharing that. I didn't know that. Yeah. I thought so that, that was the Bismarck, you like the vapors. <laughs> well, that too. <laughs> <laughs> That's tight, but yeah, man, bro. It's, it's, and it's so true. You know, it's like, you know, just like the book says, we're here, literally, the span of time that we're here, you know, we live 30, 40, 50, 60, 80 years, you know, 90 years maximum. You yeah. Know, it's, it's just a vapor compared to the space and eternity. You know what I'm saying? It goes so fast, bro. And I know you know that. You know what I'm saying? So it's, Man, a, it, it's so, it's so important. I can't even fathom eternity because we can look back and look at our B-boy career and be like, dang, 20 years is long. But to be in a place where there's never no time. Mm -hmm. Well, think about it's this. Like, it's, it's crazy. Well, think about this, you know. So if your whole identity is wrapped up in being a b-boy you know what i'm saying what happens when you start getting older you know what i'm saying and you're not, not on top anymore like me like, it's gonna happen like, yeah like me it's gonna like, happen. i'm playing the back role in the crew you know what i'm saying but i'm happy to do that like i love that because it's not about me you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. it's not all about me you know what i'm saying so it's like if your whole identity is wrapped up in it and even in hip hop, like I was saying before, what happens when your greatest idols fall? You know, mm -hmm. what I'm saying you're, you know, we love hip hop. We are hip hop. That's our culture. You know what I'm saying? But it's not our identity. You know what I'm saying? No. We transcend hip hop. You know what I'm saying? Hip hop is just a tool that we use mm -hmm. in, in this life. You know what I'm saying? To express who we are. You know what I'm saying? It's, yeah. It's the context in which we live now. You know what I'm saying? But we're spiritual, life is we're, greater than hip hop, bro. <laughs> we're spiritual beings having a physical experience. Boom. What's up? That's it. Venom. That's it, man. That's it. You we got, got my it. boy Venom from Skill Methods in here. I can't wait to talk to him, Vix. Like when he comes on, I got mm -hmm. some history for I got some um some Florida history though too, bro. But I, I I can honestly say though, like I over this interview, I gained a, a a great more respect for you because you you opened my eyes up to a, um like to like to see what was going on with the Midwest because my knowledge was always like West Coast, Florida, New York, and Europe, but that middle part, Ohio, Columbus, like but I knew who Ill Style Rockers was, but that was it. I didn't know anything mm -hmm. after that. But Street Symphony. Mm -hmm. I heard about you guys in the early 2000s on MySpace, but I didn't know exactly what it was, but you broke it down. Yeah, absolutely, man. Absolutely. And, you know, shout outs to Pittsburgh, shout outs to Detroit, you know, Fort Wayne, Indiana, you know, and mm -hmm. Indianapolis, you know, all these Midwest, you know, pockets, you know, and they all have their, you know, they all have their part to play that they played in the, the, the greater Midwest scene. You know what I'm saying? And it's not widely recognized like, you know, Cali or New York. But it's just it's just as relevant, you know what I'm saying? And it's just part of the B-Boy history as well. You know what I'm saying? Right. So, but shout out to you, man. Appreciate you uh, having me on here, man. Giving me the platform to speak. You know, being open-minded and being real and honest. You know what I'm saying? Transparent about um, about life and about breaking. And then, of course, the history, man. You know, you're you're the original. You know what I'm saying? You're, <laughs> you're the documentary. You know what I'm saying? I always got love, I love it. for you for that. Yeah, thank you, bro. I really can, I appreciate that. that makes me smile because 
um, I just always felt, I've always felt like a great connection to the B-Boy. Even the younger guys, when I see the new kids, I love seeing the new kids because it's like, I started breaking when I was 12, though, bro. So I know what it's like to be like a teen, you know? I know what yeah, it's like to be a teen. When I was 12 too. Oh, really? Yeah. Yo, wasn't it fun, though, bro? Oh, man. All flat. you needed was a little windbreaker, though, bro, and a radio and, like, your favorite pair of shoes. And that was the world, though, bro. That was the world. No internet, no, no, no computers. The only thing you had was your imagination. I used to think, like, yo, I wonder what, it, what it's like to be, like, on the other side of town. My imagination was my, was my cell phone. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. You know? Yeah. And um, I could just yeah. say this. I want to say one more thing. Yeah. You guys from Ohio, you guys brought back that B-Boy flavor, though, bro, because I've never seen people with the old English on the back of their shirts and the nameplate belts. And every time you guys are, like, posing. And when I seen that, I was like, I don't know who these guys are in Ohio, though, but Brick is back, though, bro. Mm, so it dope. was That's because so of dope, you guys. Dope. Honestly, for me, for me, you guys mm-hmm. sparked the t- um, You guys sparked the touch. Because I said, Mighty Zulu Kings, I said, I'm already Zulu. But I was like, oh, shoot, they got the old, they got the matching Pumas that match. <laughs> I was like, yo, yo I, want, I want to see what's up with these guys. So you guys got me hyped. And then when I seen Casper Battleborn, that just really, that really, and I was, and when he was throwing up the, the, the Z, I was like, who's this white boy throwing up the Z sign? Like, I never see that. And yeah. like, that was Casper. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and Casper yeah. was a brand new face when we when we came out. You know, he was the up and coming figure. You know what I'm saying? We were we were um nobodies, you know, that we mm. we made this conglomerate thanks to Ness being the mastermind. You know, mastermind mm-hmm. he saw the potential in all of us. You know what I'm saying? He connected us all to one as one as a conglomerate. And that's when we brought forth to the world, you know what I'm saying, a new style, a new approach. So Exactly. Yeah, man. All right. Man. All right. Yeah. Thank you, bro. Once again, you got anything um, that you want to close out with the words? Like you have a message that we can share because I know this video will be watched. I'm going to upload it to YouTube so it can be up there in the ether for eternally. You know what I'm saying? I know people are going to look at this video and I want them to leave with a message. Though. And what would your message be to the world? My message to the world? Hmm. That's a good question. I would have to say um, in a nutshell, mm-hmm. you know, if you're you know, if you're struggling about life, you're struggling about purpose, you know what I'm saying? I would say just be open and honest and re- mm-hmm. reach out, reach out to God. You know what I'm saying? Be, uh, be honest with yourself and be honest with God. Be honest with, the, um, you know, search and search for information. You know, be thirsty, be hungry for information, just like you're hungry for, you know, the next battle, you know, just like you're hungry for that next, you know, competition, the next jam, the mm-hmm. next cipher. You know what I'm saying? Be hungry for, you know, to knowledge to something that's bigger, greater than us. You know, the answers to life, the the main questions, you know, who are we? Where do we come from? Where are we going when we die? And what's the meaning of life? You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. And, and be honest with yourself and you're pursuing those answers. And I believe that the the truth will come to you. So that's, that's my, my, you know, that's the message that I would give. And I want to also say, be on the lookout for my jam coming out. I'm doing a oh. jams, you know, starting out here in Ohio, looking at going to different places, Toronto, Atlanta, you know, AZ, and the King of King Cypher Jam. So look out. Oh, okay. And also my mixtapes, because I'm also DJ now. So I got two mixes out now. So as you have the Gospel Funk uh, Judgment Day mixtape, Gospel Breaks, and then also the Outlaw Rock mixtape, the video oh. mixtape. Oh, okay. All right. All right, brother. All right, man. Thank you again. Appreciate you, bro. Much love and uh, looking forward to building with you next time. All right. We'll stay in contact. Peace. Bro, peace.